welcome to home ed looks like this i thought i'd do a quick video discussing unit studies because i've just finished putting our next one together which is about guy fawkes and bonfire night so what is a unit study a unit study is a topic or area of interest you choose to focus on for a period of time you incorporate various areas of learning and development into that study and for example, in this video, we're doing a brief study on Guy Fawkes and Bonfire Night. In this one subject, I'll incorporate history, English, math, science, art and crafts, geography, you name it. We get as many subjects in there as we can. <laughs> a unit study can be useful for grabbing your child's attention by either letting them pick the theme of the study or picking one that you'll know they, they will appreciate. Children engage with topics they have interest in far more. Therefore, a lot of home educators do take advantage of that knowledge and use these loved areas of interest to incorporate the subject studies the children do not normally engage with in a fun, unique and interesting way. In this particular study we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to be solving a mathematical code breaker using sums and a cipher. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at all the things that I've printed out in front of me. Uh, we're going to practice our creative writing, uh, make some cakes, craft together, um, all while in the history of Guy Fawkes. As Anthony has ASD and is only 10, I tend to keep the written work to his ability um, and to the point, whereas my teenagers are going to delve much deeper into the lead up to the gunpowder plot, the religious persecution, the sense of desperation that people would have had back then, whilst also debating the positives and negatives behind the actions and motivation of um, Robert Catsby and Guy Fawkes. Our topic on Halloween was also a unit study and incorporated global beliefs and practices, so a lot of religious education in that aspect, sociology, math, science, geography, history, lots and lots and lots of funky science, as you saw in other videos, English, role-playing games, um, arts and crafts, anything that made learning fun and easy to absorb and retain. And that's the key point, really, with the unit study, making learning fun, engaging and easy to absorb and retain long term not just short term so as you can see a unit study opens up much opportunity for experimenting and doing what works for your family so you have to do your unit studies to suit your needs and your child's needs and your learning styles and your child's learning styles so a unit study does open up much opportunity for experimenting and doing what works for you um, it doesn't necessarily have to involve writing either and um, it is highly encouraged to get out and about during a unit study because there is so much out there that you can take advantage of from museums to historical buildings and houses you've got the National Trust and English Heritage and um, working farms such as Ascot Working Farm um, and so on that allow you to take your um, unit study adventure to that next level. You can also create fun fact books and we tend to refer to them as laugh books and Anthony will make them with lift up flaps, art and photographs. Nims is more of a scrapbook style and the older ones tend to do their own thing in that respect really. They tend to run with that themselves now. And with time and creativity, you can develop your own unit studies based upon your child's needs, ability and interest. So the versatility of a unit study is that you can make your own resources if you choose to do so. Or you can use external resources. And in this video, as it's been very chaotic here, we've had lots of building work going on in the house. It's literally all around me at the minute. We're going to use online resources for this one and I will pop the links in the description of the video to help you guys out. For Anthony and Nim, I am using Twinkle and for William, I am using Tez.
But yeah, feel free to experiment putting your own together when you feel confident enough to do so. The latter of putting it together myself is usually my first port of call. I will do a video on that at a later point so you can see how I do both. So this one with resources from the internet and then next time it'll be from resources that I've made myself. And I'll even pop that up on the WordPress blog at the time so you can all download that unit study for free. Um, designing your own does take time, which if you juggle a lot day to day may not be feasible for you. And it's okay to mix it up and go with what works with your family, like we do. Sometimes we'll use resources we put together ourselves, other times we'll download them. It literally just depends on what we're studying at that moment in time and everything else around us. Like living life really. It does also take a lot of research into that subject to put a unit study together. However, I am a great believer and regularly tell people if there's something you don't know, you can either learn it yourself on your own or you can learn it alongside your child and do it together. When it comes to making my own though, I am lucky that we have a very good home library. Uh, we'd much rather invest in books than a lot of other things. Uh, we really, really love our books here and we both independently grew up in families where reading was always encouraged and a book request was never a no. We've tried to nurture this at home and currently have about 12 bookcases full of books and several boxes of books ready in advance for the house move ahead. The educational ones are always kept available so we do have a really great library we can turn to at home which I do find helpful. But don't panic if you don't, because obviously we still have public libraries and you also have um, well the entire world of information at your fingertips online as well. So you can pretty much find anything as you need it really. It can seem a lot more intimidating than it actually is to put together your own unit study. So many other home educators also offer unit studies that you can download from their blogs and their websites. Um, I've already mentioned resource sites such as Twinkle and Tears and there are many more that I would delve into in my written blog of this as well but this is just me rambling as I've got to the end of my unit study preparations ready to get started so I'm going to go get some short eye <laughs> ready to get going tomorrow morning with our Guy Fawkes unit study and in a few weeks, I'll show you how I go about putting a unit study together for my children using resources that I make for myself. And like I said before, I'll make that available to you as well. So, catch you soon. <laughs>
amazing bonfire records on the 1st of January 2016 Inglesia Ni Cristo held the largest firework display it consisted of 810,904 fireworks and was achieved in the Philippine Arena Manila at the countdown to the 2016 celebrations. The display lasted for an astonishing 1 hour, 1 minute and 32.35 seconds. The first use of rockets can be traced back to 13th century China. Propelled by gunpowder, the flying fireworks were first recorded in 1042. So did you know that fireworks went back to China? No? See, you learn something new every year, don't you, Anthony? So our challenge today is to solve the maps calculations and use the code below to turn your answers into bonfire-themed words and punchlines. So this is your cipher here. So that's what a code break, break is called, isn't it, Anthony, a cipher? Mm -hmm. So we know that A means 26, B means 25, and then you can see a Z means 1. So they basically just reverse the alphabet and the numbers up to 26, haven't they? So that's our cipher. So you can go across to the letter you want or the number you want and see what it corresponds to. That's page 1. So if you put that there on this side. So... See, this is a fun math one at the minute. I'm getting small and small by the minute. <laughs> I'm getting bigger, but I'm getting small and tiny. Sorry, love. So the first question is seven times three. <laughs> What letter even? Uh, where's the 18? 18! I'm coming. Ah, yeah. Clever boy. And then it's 72 divided by 8. So again, that's your 8 times table. I'm about to be 8 times table. Well, now it's your time to practice. Oh. <laughs> Firecrackers. Yeah. So, what day is it today, children? No bonfire! Yeah! <laughs> the bonfire night! I want to try and look and make my picture look realistic, though. Okay, so what are we doing today, kids? We're making firework pictures, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. And, and this is how we incorporate art into our unit studies. So we're going to do some fire pictures and then maybe make a bonfire picture with with some handprints on as well. We'll see how we go. Right, should we crack on, Kitty Bops? Yeah, I'm going to choose this one. I'm okay. going to choose this one. I'm going to try and make a, a firework, but we, a firework so we have been to before. Okay. Do you remember the farm one, what we went at, Wilson's farm, what he worked at? Ah, I remember what you mean, yeah. I'm going to try and it. I'm making it a tap stick. I'm doing it as a tap stick because, look, this is really a tap stick because it's made of wood. Can you see my tap stick? Picture? I can, that's looking amazing. Now I need to put in water. Okay. I'm still using this one. Can I do, can I put something else on? Huh? Yeah, you do what you need to do, princess. Now, mum, 
now I need the light, light, because you know when people are filming and some of the lights were on, mm. now we have to create people filming it. <laughs> no, I want to make it look real. Okay. I don't know if that's real too. I'm... They're looking fantastic so far, guys. Put that down and now I'm going to do this. I remember when I didn't want to um, go there because I didn't like loud noises. I know. You don't like fireworks, do you? I like them now, but it still hurts my ears. Yeah. That happens. So, some people are filming. Some people are still filming, but the light is off. But do you know what I'm going to make it look like? What? Do we have a black? I don't think black would show up very well on black paper. No, I have an idea to make a silver color. Okay, what's your idea? Drawing the people who are filming, but you can see them a little bit in black. You could draw around them like an outline and another color. No, but I need it to. Okay, I'll get you a black. Pen. Pen. Black pen. That's a good idea. Can you keep it with me one minute? It's a bonfire. Ah! It's, it's one of those fires in Fortnite. Oh, I like it. It's going to be a rainbow one, so it can look fantastic. <laughs> like, actually, because I really want to look fantastic. Yeah, it's not... <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love it fantastic. Um, so basically, do you know where in cartoons where it goes up but then that bit is a little bit faded? Yeah. And then when it gets to the last stage and you can see it fully, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Ah, okay. I wanted to make it look good. I'm it's gonna look awesome, I can't wait to see it. I, I'm gonna look at the blue. Yeah, yours is gonna look brilliant as well. So moving on to our next craft. We're now going to make bonfires where we use our hands as the flames. And this as yeah, the wood. You've made your wood, haven't you? Ripped up pieces of brown paper. We did some Halloween ones, our Halloween spooky science special. Oh. Halloween looks like this by Home Ed looks like this. <laughs> incorporate some history and English and comprehension into our gunpowder plot. So we're going to start off by doing one of our presentations. So let's have a look. Now I'm showing Anthony a picture and I'm going to ask him some questions about it. Um, so Anthony, what do you think about this person? Can I do it too? Let me move that over. I want to do that too. Okay. What does he look like to you? He looks like him. <laughs> he looks like Guy Fawkes. Yeah, because he's got the same hat. Clever girl, he does have the same hat. That's a, that's a good connection to me. I'll show you what she was looking at. She was looking at this. <laughs> Guy Fawkes was born on the 13th of April, 1570 in York. Yeah. 
And we've been to York, haven't we? Do you remember yeah. that's where uh, remember hey. that's where your Vic was? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me he's got the same mustache. Yeah, because we're learning about him. So eventually Guy Fawkes travelled off to Europe and was fighting on behalf of Spain, oh. which was a very Catholic country at the time, predominantly a Catholic country. He called himself Guido instead of Guy and became an officer. So that's why you'll sometimes hear people refer to him as Guido Fawkes or Guy mm -hmm. Fawkes or Guido. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's where the tradition of Penny for the Guy comes from. When he came back to England, he became involved in a plot to kill King James I. Oh. A group of men wanted Guy Fawkes to be involved partly because he understood how to use gunpowder. And as we know, gunpowder is explosive and dangerous, isn't it? But he got caught and killed. <laughs> this was their gunpowder plot. So, can you find Guy Fawkes in this picture for me? Which one do you think he is? Yeah, well done. It's got it on Guido Fawkes there to trick you, hasn't it? And can you spot the ringleader, Robert, anywhere? Yep, well done. Correct. I can read. So, Guy Fawkes lived over 400 years ago. It's a very long time, isn't it? So, what was life like when Guy Fawkes lived and how is it different today? So now we're going to discuss how the gunpowder plot started and some of the problems the plotters encountered. Okay, and our aims are to understand who some of them were why and how they wanted to carry out their plans so the reason behind it yeah mm -hmm. and uh, the influences they had in their lives at that time so do you know where this is this picture i'm showing you the big ben now mm -hmm. aren't i where about in the country is that in england london london clever boy the year 1605 in london and a group of young catholic men meet to discuss their worries and explain how angry they are that King James I is punishing Catholic people in England and persecuting them. The men often met in secret in London and obviously knew that the King opens Parliament every year and therefore the King would be there in November 1605. They then decided to blow up the Houses of Parliament when the King was inside. And they planned on using many, many, many barrels of gunpowder to do so. Why? So, who are the plotters? So, you've got Thomas Bates, and yeah. he was a servant of Robert Catsby. Uh, Robert Winter, cousin of Robert. And then you've got Christopher Wright, friend mm. of Robert. You've got John Wright, another friend. Thomas Percy, who was actually one of the king's bodyguards. And then you've got Guy Fawkes, who was their gunpowder expert, also known as Guido Fawkes. Thomas Winter, another cousin of Robert, and Robert B himself, who was the ringleader. The men have a problem. How are they going to get the gunpowder into the Houses of Parliament? What would you do if you were in that situation? How would you get them there? When it was closed, I, was, I would sneak around it. And put the barrels there, and then, and then, as soon as, and then hide around, the, and then, um, just camp there until they came in, and then light it, because then they can't catch me then. Okay. I'll sacrifice so. my life. <laughs> or just light it, put a bit of string into it, light it, and then when it blows up, the fuse. And then you can get, get time to run away, and then it'll blow so up. So you'd give yourself a long enough fuse to escape. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then he's dead. <laughs> you can't catch you then, can he? No. So, Thomas Percy, who was a royal bodyguard to the king, mm -hmm. moved to a house that wasn't far from Parliament. And the men started digging a tunnel from the house all the way to the Houses of Parliament 
and they dug it at night to avoid anybody hearing them or seeing what they were up to and catching them. And then they had a stroke of luck. What? Dun dun dun. Thomas Percy was allowed to rent a space in a cellar directly underneath the Houses of Parliament. And that was right under where the king would be sitting. So they didn't need to dig the tunnel anymore. Guy Fawkes pretends to be Percy's servant and starts moving barrels of gunpowder into the cellar to hide them. And in total, there were 36 barrels of gunpowder in the cellar. Wow. That's a lot, isn't it? I wouldn't have, what I would have done, I wouldn't have put 30. I would have put like 10, because that's enough to explode yeah. it. Well, they were just experimenting, weren't they, really? They were guessing. So them 36 barrels would have caused such a huge explosion that all the wooden houses surrounding would have been affected and burned and the fire would have spread through London really quickly, killing innocent men, women and children. So then just days before they were ready to blow up Parliament, the plotters discovered another problem. On the 26th of October 1605, Lord Monteagle, who was a Catholic, receives an unsigned letter that warns him not to go to the opening of Parliament. And um, part of it said, My Lord, out of the love I bear to some of your friends, I have a care of your preservation. Therefore, I would advise you, as you tender your life, to devise some excuse to shift your attendance at this Parliament. I say they shall receive a terrible blow this Parliament, and yet they shall not see who hurts them. They'll be dead. <laughs> well, that was the insinuation, wasn't it? Mm. So a servant of Lord Monteagle tells the plotters that someone has written a letter about their plans to blow up Parliament. So what do you think they'd be saying to each other in that situation if they all met up? Uh, he did it. <laughs> They'd all be trying to work out who it was, wasn't it? Yeah, but then that's yeah. like for somebody there. So... <laughs> Well, none of them knew, apart from the person who actually wrote the letter. Mm -hmm. None of them at that time would have known who wrote it. So they'd have all been guessing and speculating and accusing each other incorrectly. Um, so what do you think Guy Fawkes wanted to do at this point? Continue or call her off? I would have called her off. Worried that they could not go ahead with the plan, wanted to find out who sent the letter, but obviously had no proof. So they checked to see whether the cellar had been searched and the gunpowder was still there. So they decided to carry on with their plan to blow up Parliament. Just all. Yeah. So I've got a little worksheet for us to do on this one. Yeah. And then once we've done the worksheet, we'll move on to the next activity. This one's like a cartoon and I want you to work out or make up what you think each of the people would be saying to each other, the plotters, in that situation. And Anthony has put his cartoon together. Yeah. With his answers, obviously that's going to show backwards to you, I'm afraid, but you get the idea. So, what year did the plot take place? This is our recap session now, just to reinforce the learning. What year did you think it happened? 1605. Well done. So, what did they want to do? Um, they wanted um to put gunpowder under um, where the king was because he did it every single year he opened parliament every single yeah. year and he wanted to blow it up but somebody wrote a letter and he tried to figure it out he wrote the letter <laughs> so who was the gunpowder expert guy Fawkes. yeah guy fox and why did he want to blow up parliament and the king because he wanted freedom <laughs> What happened a few days before they were about to carry out their plot? Um, before they were about to carry out the plot, um, one of the um, people who, who was helping them wrote a note. To a member of parliament, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. the so, what they all said. where did they go and check before they made the decision? 
the gunpowder. Yeah, they checked to make sure the gunpowder was still there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And can you remember the name of the ringleader? Robus Caseby. Well done. Okay. So, Lord Monteagle showed his letter to the king, who decided to take it seriously. On the morning of the 5th of November, the king's security guard searched the cellar and found Guy Fawkes hiding with the many barrels of gunpowder. Guy Fawkes was tortured until he confessed to trying to blow up the Houses of Parliament, the King and his government. And he was executed, because it's considered treason. The King decided that on the 5th of November every year from that day, we would all remember the gunpowder plot and how his plan failed. And every year we burn bonfires and traditionally we would put a model of Guy Fawkes on the top, an effigy. And then we'd like fireworks and sparklers and celebrate. <laughs> when, we, when we set off the fireworks, you remember us and make us think what happened. High five, Ant. <laughs>75 ml of water if you want to go on then <laughs> clever girl and now we need to mix it And then we'll ice them to make sure, well, decorate them to make sure that they look like bonfires. I'm <laughs> Can I lift the spoon? Can I lift the bowl? We're about, to, <laughs> we're about to decorate our cakes. And in front of us, we have three bowls of ice and we're food colouring in. Do you guys want to start mixing them up? Yeah. Right, so now... You're going to put a dollop of each colour on each cake. Okay, you're going for like a bit of a Stonehenge structure, are you, Nim? Yeah. But this is kind of a weird one. Okay? <laughs> okay. okay? writing his own letter to Lord Monteagle where he's going to try and give him a clue without giving away what the plot was.
So this is our meal all set up for the evening and then I'll just call them in and they can all help themselves to it and then we'll sit around the fire and eat it. Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder treason and plot. I see no reason this gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Guy Fawkes, Guy Fawkes, was his intent to blow up the King and Parliament. Three score barrels of powder below, over old England to overthrow. But by God's mercy he was catched. With dark and lantern and lighted match. So holler boys, let the bells ring. Holler boys, God save the king.